Okay, so how amazing is the hyperlapse mode on the Mavic Air 2? I think it is incredible. Good day, everyone. Welcome to another Quick Tips video for your Mavic Air 2. Today, I have three topics for you. First of all, I'm gonna talk about what is probably my favorite thing to do with the Mavic Air 2, and spoiler alert, it's the hyperlapse feature. Secondly, I'm gonna show you something that is super cool and is also required to have if you plan to fly at night. And finally, I'm gonna show you why you should all be using Decenalite Color Profile for your video footage from the Mavic Air 2. And I'll show you how easy it is to actually make it look great. So let's get right to the quick tips for your Mavic Air 2. <laughs> hey, did you know who invented the swivel chair? I bet you'll never guess. I'll tell you at the end of the video. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you happen to be here for the first time, my name is Russ, welcome to you as well. When you're done watching this video, go ahead and browse the channel. If you find anything of interest or value, I invite you to click on that subscribe button. So like I said, today I'm gonna cover three quick tips that I think everyone should know about their Mavic Air 2. This is actually the second installment of my quick tips videos. If you wanna go ahead and watch the first one, I'll put it right up here. I'll also link it down in the video description. So the first thing that I want to show you is something that I've actually been using for quite a while now on my drones and it's to help increase visibility at all times but in particular for flying at night and it's a fully tested and FAA approved anti-collision light from Loom Cube. Now yes you may be wondering can I fly at night recreationally? Yes, you can in the United States, but you need to have an FAA approved anti-collision light that can be seen for up to three miles away. LoomCube created this very powerful drone light called the Strobe, and it attaches to the top of your Mavic Air 2 with super strong 3M dual lock, and the strobe effect is incredibly bright. It can be flashed white, red, or green, and it lasts for six hours on the highest strobe setting. It only weighs 10 grams and it has no effect on the drone's flight performance. And it can be seen from any direction except from directly below the drone. Now, as I mentioned on the Mavic Air 2, it's best to be mounted on the very top of the drone, but you can also mount it on the back. Now, it's not gonna affect the sensors if you're gonna be flying at night because in the dark, the sensors aren't functional anyway. Yes, I do realize also that there are quite a few options out there when it comes to drone lighting, but this is the one that I've used for a very long time because it fits on pretty much any drone, even the Mavic Mini. It's FAA approved and it's fully tested. And the best thing is at the making of this video, like today, they just lowered the price of this thing by $10. So I'm gonna have a link down in the video description if you wanna get one for yourself. Also, they sell a three pack, so if you have more than one drone, you can have one for each of your drones. Now, the next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is Decenalite Color Profile and why you should not be intimidated in using it. Now, if you're relatively new to flying drones and capturing aerial footage, more than likely you're probably just using the normal color profile and letting the camera choose what's best. Now, for the most part, that looks pretty good, but I wanna encourage all of you to try using the Decenalite color profile because it captures more information, which allows you to make your footage look so much better when you're editing it. All it takes is just a little bit of editing with any video editing program. So here's some footage that I captured this past week while I was on vacation. And this clip right here is captured with the normal color setting and everything else was set to auto. Now here is some footage using the Decenalite color profile. And after just a little bit of editing, here is what it looks like. So much nicer, right? So here's how I color corrected that. I used Adobe Premiere Pro CC, but the steps are gonna be pretty much the same no matter what editing program that you're using. Okay, so here I have already imported a short clip from our vacation and it is in Decenalike. And I'm just gonna show you the most simple way that you can edit your Decenalike footage. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. You can add LUTs, um, you can play with the curves, you can do all kinds of things with it, but I'm just gonna show you the most simple way. Now I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CC and I like it because the learning curve for me was great, but there's a lot of programs out there. I've, I've got a tutorial on CyberLink PowerDirector. That's a great program. I just purchased Loom, LumaFusion for my iPad Pro. And if you wanna see a tutorial on that, on how to edit your drone footage, let me know down in the comments. I, It's really hard for me because I've never used it before, so I'm learning how to use that, but 
As far as editing your decent like footage, these steps are going to be pretty much the same no matter what editing program that you're using. So this is going to look a little bit intimidating if you've never done this before, but trust me, it's not intimidating at all. If you can fly a drone, you can edit your decent like footage. And so let's go ahead and what we need to do is pull up the Lumetri color panel right here. And it's right there. If you don't see it and you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, just click on the window, make sure that it's checked off here. And then also I'm gonna use the scopes today. I'm not gonna show you how I use the scopes, maybe a little bit, but this is just for me to see if I'm doing it correctly. But we're not gonna talk about the scopes very much today. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna highlight our clip. We're gonna go over here to Lumetri Color and we're gonna turn up the exposure a little bit because it is underexposed just a little. So I'm gonna dial it up just a little bit there. I think that looks better. And the contrast, this is where we're gonna make the biggest difference because decent like footage is very flat. There's hardly any contrast. It's kind of grayed out, it looks pretty bland. We're gonna go ahead and turn up our contrast and we're gonna bring that up pretty far. Um, not that far, we're not gonna go all the way up to 100. But I would say about 70, maybe 65 looks pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn up the highlights just a hair. And we're gonna bring the shadows down a little bit as well. So basically what we're doing, we're spreading apart, adding more contrast, and now we're gonna do is add a little bit of color. I think our blacks look pretty good. The whites look, a, well, they might be a little bit over. We'll bring down our whites just a little bit. And now we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of color right here with the saturation. I guess I already tapped on saturation a little bit, but this is what it looked like um, before any saturation was added. And then we're gonna dial that up a little bit. Let's go up to about 140 and there. That's it. That's really all you need to do. That's the most simple way to do it. Let's go ahead and turn it off. There is straight out of the camera. And there is after less than two minutes of color correction. So already looks a little bit better. Now, one thing that you can do if you're feeling brave, you can go in, go into the curves. I shouldn't say that because it's actually pretty simple, but you're just gonna go into the curves and you're gonna make three dots here. We're gonna put one in the lower left, one in the middle, one in the upper right right there and what we're going to do we're going to make this kind of an s curve we're going to make this look kind of like an s we're going to pull the highlights here up a little bit we're going to take the darks down a little bit watch this pool of water right here this little overflow there it is naturally and they're adding a little bit of contrast i think that just looks a little bit better adds a little more interest a little more depth to the image and as you can see this looks a little bit like an s so that's really all you need to do let's show you what it looks like without the curves so still a little bit flat, add the curves, and there you go. So let's go ahead and just play it through a little bit, see what it looks like. You know, it still looks a little bit dark to me, so I'm gonna go back to basic correction, and I'm gonna dial up the exposure a little bit, and we know that we're able to bring up the exposure. If you look over here at the Lumetri scopes, we still have some room up here. We still have some black, and that means that we're not overexposed. You can see if you pull up the exposure too far, Okay, then we're running out of room up there and you can see it's really blown out here and it's really overexposed. So that's why you use the scopes, just to make sure that you're not doing something too much. You just kind of want to keep everything right in the middle. That's a, a simple of an explanation that I can give you. Uh, I'm not an expert on Lumetri scopes at all, but just from watching other YouTube videos, that's what I've learned. And so that's how you can edit your d like footage. Like I said, you can just do two minutes of it and be done with it. And you can do this with any editing program. So I hope this helps you guys get out there and try it. Now, finally today from my very first drone, the Mavic Pro, one of my favorite things to do has been to capture hyperlapse video footage. Now it was pretty difficult with the Mavic Pro because it did not have hyperlapse mode. What you had to do is you had to put the drone into tripod mode and then choose interval photos. And then you had to hold the stick in one direction for about 15 minutes. Then you had to take all those photos together into Lightroom or Photoshop and edit them into a hyperlapse. So it was kind of tedious and the results were okay. It was still fun to do, but now DJI has the built-in hyperlapse feature and the Mavic Air 2 has that. And it is so amazing what you can do with it, especially if you use the waypoint option. In the hyperlapse intelligent flight modes, you can choose free, circle, course lock, or waypoint. 
Now the reason that I recommend Waypoint is because you can change the camera position throughout the hyperlapse and the elevation at the same time. And this gives you so much more flexibility and it makes your hyperlapse look so much more professional. Now here are just a couple of examples that I got the last two days. To enable this feature, you go to your video settings, you choose hyperlapse, and then you choose one of the four modes. Click on waypoint, and then move your drone to the position that you want to start the hyperlapse from. Once you get your drone into position, set your camera angle, and then click on the first plus. Go ahead and maneuver your drone to the next position, change your camera angle to whatever you want it to be, and then click on the next plus. Continue doing this until you have reached your final position. As far as what intervals to choose, I always use two seconds and then 10 or 11 or 12 seconds for the duration. It's pretty much a personal preference, so feel free to play with those until you find something that looks appealing to you. One thing that I did realize earlier today when I was getting this footage of the wind towers, it was pretty windy today. It was like 20 mile per hour winds. And when I set my waypoint mission, my hyperlapse mission, I brought up the grid so I knew exactly where the center of the frame was, and I wanted that wind tower to be in the middle of the frame throughout the hyperlapse mission. Well, what had happened is, even though I set that to be in the middle of the frame the entire mission, by the time I got to the end, it wasn't right because the wind was affecting the waypoint positions. Now, I know that the waypoints are GPS, but on windy days, the, the, the end product, the final product, your hyperlapse might not be exactly what you set it to be. So just be aware of that. If it's gonna be a windy day, just try to position your drone in a way that the wind is not gonna affect it so much. Because in this case, the drone was flying sideways against a pretty strong wind. And I think that affected the final product. And then the other thing to be aware of, if you're gonna be doing a hyperlapse in the wind, is you might have to do a little bit of warp stabilizing. It's called warp stabilizer. Now, I don't know what it's called on other editing programs, but on Adobe Premiere Pro CC, which is what I use, it's called warp stabilizer and it's really easy to do. You just choose the clip that you want to stabilize and then you go to your effects panel, choose warp stabilizer and put that on your clip. And then it just takes like five minutes and that'll take out all those little jerky movements, any of those little you know, jittery bumps and things like that. And it'll crop it in just a little bit, but not too much. And it just makes your hyperlapse look so much more smooth. So my challenge for all of you today, if you have a Mavic Air 2, go out and practice using the waypoint mode on the hyperlapse, and then post that to your YouTube or your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever. And then I want you to put a link to that in the comments down below. Let's take a look and see what you can all make with the waypoint hyperlapse mission on your Mavic Air 2. I'm interested to see what you all can come up with. So that's my three Mavic Air 2 quick tips for today. Just a reminder that there's a link in the description for the Loom Cube Strobe. Trust me, you will love this thing. It is so bright. And I'll also have a link for Adobe Premiere Pro CC if you wanna check that out. Oh, one more thing, who invented the swivel chair? It was actually Thomas Jefferson. So in case you didn't know that, I thought that was pretty interesting. Anyway, thank you for watching the video today, everyone. Have a great day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.